Hello and welcome back to Mate's Tottenham blog and to another episode of Transfer Talk. Today we're going to be talking about the future of Christian Eriksen which could very well soon be sorted out and also a player who could potentially become Jose Mourinho's second signing at Tottenham Hotspur in the next couple of days. Uh, before we get into that, if you do want more of these Transfer Talk videos plus interactive Transfer Talk live streams, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and click the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload. So uh, to begin, we just quickly run through this uh, update on the future of Christian Eriksen. And it is now looking increasingly likely that he will end up at Inter Milan this month rather than in the summer. Uh, this is, of course, the best outcome for Tottenham in this situation. Uh, you know, we're not going to get much money back for him, uh, but it's better than you know holding on to him for another six months and then letting him go uh, for free in the summer. Uh, according to Sky Sports, the, in, some Inter Milan officials are in London today uh, to finalise a deal that would see Christian Eriksen move to the San Siro. They're also there... Uh, to sign Olivier Giroud from Chelsea, but of course we're more interested in the Christian Eriksen side of things. Um, they are still reporting that despite Inter officials have, despite the fact that they have made the journey to London to finalise this deal, uh, there is still some way to go in terms of agreeing a fee for the player. Um, Inter Milan are offering about €10 million, Euro, which is in and around £8.5 million, pounds, but Tottenham want double that, uh, which I think is quite a, a strange uh, approach to this situation because... You know, we could potentially lose him for, for absolutely nothing in, in such a short space of time. And Inter Milan know that. And I'm sure they're going to use that as a bargaining chip. And I think if there is going to be a compromise found uh, in this deal, it will certainly be uh, closer to what Inter Milan want. Um, and just, I suppose, as a secondary source for this uh, this story as well, Fabrizio Romano reported yesterday that uh, it, Tottenham are kind of resigned to the fact that Eriksen will be leaving this month. He is ready to go. Uh, we know it, it has for quite a while now he has wanted to leave Tottenham. He made those comments last summer. Um, and for that reason, Romano is saying personal terms won't be an issue. Um, it's almost a case of getting that fee done and it'll be very, very short negotiations between Ericsson and Inter Milan uh, to get that move finalised so he can move off to Italy. And, you know, Inter Milan currently top of the, or I think joint top of the Serie A. So potentially a trophy there for Ericsson this year. But um, so it's good news. Uh, and it's a bit bittersweet, you know, because he's a player who, who has uh, given so much to this club. He's been such a good servant, but it's due to his really poor performances and lack of uh, desire, I suppose, in the last season or two that uh, a lot of Tottenham fans, including me, will have an element of happiness about seeing him uh, finally leave the club. Now, a player who could potentially be joining Tottenham in the next couple of days, um, even though this, this deal does appear to have hit a slight hiccup, um, this is Porto striker Zay Luiz. Uh, now, he's from Cape Verde. He's a 28-year-old striker who joined Porto only last year. But um, it's, of course, obviously his first season with them. He scored seven goals in 12 league appearances. Now, for his career as a whole, he scored 93 goals in 267 appearances, which is, is a decent return, but you know you wouldn't have him up there among the best strikers in the world. Um, and I know there are a lot of uh, Tottenham fans out there who who won't have heard of him, but he is a, a pretty decent striker. He'd be a great backup to Harry Kane, you know, given that... Uh, any striker we do sign will know in the long term Harry Kane will be the number one it, he may be in that kind of category of striker between ones that are too good for us and ones that aren't good enough for us to be interested in he might be in that nice little middle ground where he will be a decent backup for Kane uh, and he'll kind of be okay with the fact that he won't be the number one choice he won't get as much game time as perhaps he's getting um, with Porto now he plays only as a striker he, he doesn't drop deep he doesn't move out to the wing or anything he is uh, an out and out striker uh, he's six foot tall and for that reason kind of fits into this category of player that Jose Mourinho is looking for in a striker. Um, he was asked about potentially playing Hoingman Son or Lucas Moura in that striking role while Harry Kane is out injured. But he quickly dismissed the idea and said he needs a target man uh, and neither of those fit that bill. So uh, he's certainly staying true to his word in targeting a player like Zay Louise. Um, now he is currently injured, but you know it's with, with a player who's been linked with moves away, you often hear of them being injured. I mean, Paul Pogba... An example for United this season has been injured all year, but he's, you know, they say he's just had surgery, then he's seen dancing at his brother's wedding. And I don't know if it is a similar situation with, say, Louise. He may genuinely be injured, but uh, his return date at the moment is unknown. So I don't know if maybe that is a genuine injury. That could potentially be the hiccup that this deal has uh, hit, which I'll get onto in a minute. Um, now, according to whoscored.com, their website that I find really reliable and accurate in terms of uh, uh, kind of looking into a player's style of play, and um, they've said his strengths, which again fall into that category of striker that Mourinho will be looking for. Um, he's he's good in the air, his headed attempts, he scores quite a few headers, uh, he wins a lot of aerial duels. And then on the other side of things, his key passes and finishing um, are really good, which are four traits that you would certainly love look for in a striker, perhaps even the most important four. Um, when he is uh, mainly a, a sole striker, when he's on his own, he needs to be big, he needs to be powerful. Um, and he certainly he certainly is that. Um, now, according to who scored, he doesn't have any significant weaknesses, which is another great thing, of course. Um, I'm sure there are one or two things in there that he could potentially improve on his game, but there's nothing significant 
um, that would be an, an immediate uh, worry for us. Uh, they said the only thing they've really spoken about in his style of play is that he likes to dribble, uh, which I don't really know what to make of that. There, there's nothing more to him than that, according to who scored. Um, but you know, not, not really sure what to say on that one. Um, he averages 2.4 shots per game and 0.8 key passes, which is very, very similar to Harry Kane in the league. Um, and his his return is his his ratio, I suppose, goals to game is about the same as Kane. So, I mean, I know he's playing in a in a in a much lesser league in uh, with FC Porto and in the previous couple of years playing over in Russia, but it is still a very similar return to Harry Kane. So you kind of do have to call him there a clinical striker, which is exactly what we want. Now the rumours that have been going around in the last twenty four hours or so, uh, Sky Sports reported earlier this morning. Uh, Tottenham have been offered the chance to sign Porto striker Zay Luiz on loan. He is one of a number of strikers Tottenham are considering following the injury to Harry Kane. Now, we know there are a number of other strikers Tottenham are looking into. Christoph Piantek from AC Milan being the main one uh, who I spoke about last week. There's another few names, Christian Benteke, uh, Charlie Austin and Danny Ings, kind of a mixture of the media throwing that name around, but also the fans saying uh, he is potentially a player that they would like to sign. Um, now Dan Kilpatrick who I think he worked with the Evening Standard he said uh, the reason I, I'm kind of saying what he's talking about now is um, I suppose Spurs are the main team that he does report on but early last summer before we'd made any deals he reported that Tottenham wanted four players uh, Jack Clark, Ryan Sessegnon Giovanni Di Celso and Tongi and Dambele and they are of course the four players that we did go on to sign so I think we do have to take his word um, a, a bit seriously now he tweeted about five hours ago he said understand Spurs are in talks with Porto over a loan for striker Zay Luiz he's another uh, Jorge Mendes player uh, with Mourinho's agent on the deal so I think uh, Jetson Fernandez has the same agent and of course Mourinho's agent is Mendes so there's certainly going to be a link there with uh, uh, Mendes trying to bring these players to Spurs and uh, you can also look at with Nuno Espirito Santo at, at Wolves I think Mendes is his agent as well but there's that Portuguese link. And if you look at all the Portuguese players uh, Santo has brought in there, uh, mainly João Moutinho and Ruben Neves, who are two very experienced, very talented players. Um, who Wolves, it was you know an absolute uh, crazy, two crazy deals, but they did bring him in. But even looking at the, at the younger players, you've Ruben, ne- uh, Ruben Vinagre, the left-back, and Pedro Neto, and even Rui Patricio, who they, of course, got in a free from uh, Sporting Lisbon when they got promoted. So Mendes certainly like to link up Portuguese players and managers. And I know... Uh, Zay Luiz is actually from Cape Verde, but you know, being in Portugal, being a team like Porto, who Mourinho does have history with, um, there there could potentially be a link there that could benefit Tottenham, even if it isn't with Zay Luiz, with uh, other players that we do try and bring in from that league. Um, you know, we had it with Pochettino, him bringing in all these Argentinian players, and it, it's maybe something that Mourinho is looking at with these Portuguese players. Now, Dan Kilpatrick has since retweeted that uh, tweet, and he's added the line, uh, now hearing this deal is unlikely, but we'll see. So I uh, don't really know what to make of that. The deal, unlikely, but we'll see. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of deals do go back and forth like this, but the fact that he said we'll see means there is still potential for that deal to go through. Um, but even even if we don't sign him, if we don't get this one done, I think it is a good indication of the type of striker that Mourinho was looking for. You know, as I'm talking about, he has said he wants a target man up front, and with Harry Kane being injured, uh, he doesn't see Lucas or Son being that player. And it seems as though he doesn't think Troy Parrott is ready to step into that first team. And I think perhaps he's right. Only 17 uh, years of age, turning 18 next month. Uh, doesn't have much first team experience it's it's a lot to put on his shoulders to make him our main striker when we are looking to turn around this dreadful campaign and hopefully make it into the top four you know you kind of would have to agree with him that I, I suppose while Troy Parrott does probably deserve a chance in the team it would be a bit too much to make him our main striker in that uh, late push for top four but uh, this is an int- interesting one with say Louise um, perhaps doesn't fit the bill of the uh, younger player that we're looking for uh, of course 28 years of age but uh, it's really encouraging that they, they are looking so uh, heavily into a striker. I think the majority of fans would agree that a midfielder and a striker would have been uh, among our, our biggest needs for this, this window, probably along with the defender, which it doesn't look like we will be addressing this window. But uh, Jose Mourinho, very keen to get a striker in. It's kind of the one thing that we've been begging out for over the last couple of years. And in those few years where we did, I suppose you could say, challenge for the league title, I think a backup striker was something we we were missing because of the... Uh, the extent and the uh, I suppose frequency of Harry Kane's injuries uh, but this is something we are heavily looking into this window um, another uh, quick update on Jack Clark as well as I was speaking about my live stream on Monday uh, it does look as though he will be joining QPR on loan this month um, you know he we call, recalled him from Leeds from his lack of game time and sending him down uh, back to the championship where you know he's used to playing it's the kind of the level that he is at at the moment Perhaps uh, Premier League football is a step too far for him right now. But QPR sitting in the middle of the table in the Championship, not really looking to, or not, I suppose, likely to make it into the playoffs. Probably clear of relegation, 10 points clear of the relegation zone. And you know, a lot of teams in between them and that uh, that drop zone. So a good non-pressure environment for him to go into. 
and hopefully he can get some more first team uh, football there as soon as that deal does get through um, and don't forget to leave down in the comments below your opinions on Zay Louise and Christian Eriksen uh, seemingly leaving the club finally um, if you have enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and as always thanks for watching